Hey, Battle Bill here with another video, and today we're getting into some more Mass League Premier Cup Go Battle League battles. Some exciting stuff has just dropped in Pokemon Go. With the release of the expansion of Crown Tundra on Pokemon Sword and Shield, has brought us Pokemon Go players a hype little event for the next 24 hours or so. By the time this video comes out, the event should be over. But with the event, we have Galarian Farfetch spawns all over the place, Galarian Ponyta and Rays, which evolve into Galarian Rapidash. More on that in a future video. And now, Galarian. Galarian Farfetch has access to its evolution in the Galar region of Surfetch, an extremely hype looking Pokemon, and it's a pure fighting type with quite the move set to go with it. It has counter as a quick move, so check, that's off to a great start. And then it has access to quite a few charge moves that you could probably mess around with in very specific metas, but for open Mass League Premier, you definitely want charge moves of Close Combat and Leaf Blade. And what I did was I tested it out for you guys. I had a hundo from the last time Galarian Farfetch had uh, dropped, so I jumped right on that task. If you want to evolve your Galarian Farfetch into a Surfetch, what you need to do is walk it as your buddy, and then hit 10 excellent throws while it's your buddy. Then after that's done, you give it 50 uh, Farfetch candies, and it evolves into Surfetch. You're ready to go and you're ready to use it. So that's what I hopped on. I evolved my hundo right away. It had been maxed out, because once I got that hundo, I was super excited. Look at this Pokemon, look at Surfetch. It's just such a beautiful thing. Now, the team I put around it wasn't easy. So, this is actually my second set with Surfetch, and I have some comments on it, so I'm extremely hyped to test it out. But the first set, I uh, went 0 and 5, and to be completely honest with you, this set uh, isn't too much better, so we're going to get into the deep dive. I wanted to give you guys some Rank 10 GBL Mass League Premier action with it, so you could see it in some real competitive battles right off the bat. I do believe its main play is going to be in either Great League or Ultra League Premier, but it does have a little bit of a potential niche in Mass League Premier also. So let's get into these battles. Let's check it out. If you're excited for this new Spice content, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let's start watching these battles. So before I can talk about this team comp that I came up with, I need to tell you about how the previous set happened, which is what created this current team comp of Rhyperior, Dragonite Safe Swap, and Sir Fetch in the back. With access to close combat, I felt like Sir Fetch's best place in a team of three would be in the back, so that's why it's there as the closer. Now, what had happened was in the first set, I tried to run Surfetch with Togekiss and Magnezone, and I would not stop running into triple flyer and double flyer teams, and Surfetch, unlike its fat fighting counterparts in the Mass League Premier, like Machamp and Conkeldor, they both have access to rock moves, which can at least threaten and do heavy damage to potential flyers. Surfetch doesn't have access to a move like that. It gets maybe a neutral Night Slash or a neutral Brave Bird, but those aren't threatening flyers, and and you definitely want to make sure you have Leaf Blade for potential Swamperts in the meta, and you want close combat 100% without a doubt for all the Steel types that you're going to run into, like your Magna Zones and your Metagrosses. So what happened there was I lost a lot. I kept on running into a bunch of Flyers, Surfetch kept on lining up in the wrong situations, and it was not working out well. So I adjusted the team, and I put on SmackDown Rhyperior as a lead, just to try and essentially take care of any potential flying leads. I also ran a line double weak to Togekiss with Dragonite and Surfetch in the back, because the plan was if I lose lead or if I have a neutral lead is maybe played out a little bit, swap, safe swap the Dragonite, lure out potential Togekisses or potential other flyers that would deal with my Dragonite so that Surfetch, I was about to call it Galarian Farfetch, Surfetch could have a chance to go up against another type of Pokemon on that team that would not be a flying type. So that was the logic that was put into making the second team because the first team just did so poorly, it could not line up anything right. And you'll notice there I threw a Surf at the Dragonite and that essentially cost me his first match. I was fully expecting the Magnezone to come in so I was like hyped to click on that Surf and just as they swapped in, I noticed Dragon flying, but I was ready, ready to click because I knew their Magnezone had a move. And if I would have thrown the Rock Wrecker, I would have had a very high chance of winning because I didn't shield. And I'm pretty confident that Rock Wrecker one shot to Dragonite. And then my Surf Fetched and my uh, Rhyperior would have easily been able to take care of this Magnezone with its half health, even though it still had a bunch of energy. Unfortunately, Magnezone's going to throw back to back Wild Chargers, and the second one's going to take out my Surf Fetched, and we're going to lose the first match of this set. So the next thing about Surfetch that you'll notice is it maxes out just below 3000 CP at like 2985, which should tell you off the bat, it is a very glassy Pokemon. So you need to run some bulky mons like Rhyperior, like Dragonite. Dragonite's relatively bulky in Mass League Premier. 
to uh, essentially soak damage so that Surfetch can get access to the shields. And letting Surfetch get access to the shields was not an easy task in these matches. So in that first, in that lead position, I ended up winning lead, which was great. Togekiss on Rhyperior and I had SmackDown, awesome. They safe swap Dragonite, I bring in my Dragonite to essentially counter that, and I have a bit of a health lead on them. But I make a huge mistake here thinking that they weren't gonna get the two Dragon Claws, but apparently my swap was slower than I realized. And this ends up costing me two shields, and I'm gonna Dragon Breath down this Dragonite, which is great and all, but that Togekiss is going to come back in, and I'm going to be lucky if I can get off a Hurricane and potentially threaten one shield or at least do heavy damage to the Togekiss. But that was just a huge misplay on my part. I should have overfarmed a little bit through the move, either taken out their Dragonite, saved the shield, or gotten a shield of their own. So luckily that Hurricane gets a shield there, then I go down, and now I'm going to go into Rhyperior to smack down at this Togekiss. And now it all depends on what their last Pokemon is in the back that my Surf Fetch is going to go up against, and it ends up being a Garchomp. I actually throw a Surf here, which I didn't mind their Togekiss swapped out and it landed on the Garchomp because Surfetch is not going to have a great time against Garchomp since I don't have any shields. So again, big mistake in that switch I should have thrown because Surfetch needs the shields and I did not save Surfetch any shields here. So when I throw that Leaf Blade, I get their last shield. And just to show you how glassy it is, Machamp and Conkeldor can tank an Outrage from Garchomp. Yeah, Surfetch can exactly tank one. So at that point, once I'd given up shields the way that I did, this match was GG. I'm making some misplays, but again, it still gets into the analysis of Surfetch as a Pokemon in Master League Premier. So I think there's lots of value in just going through these, even though I do lose these first couple, but I promise, I promise, brighter roads ahead. Surfetch definitely has its strengths and we will be getting to them. So Tokus is gonna come in and just has too much health here and I'm going to get charmed down by it and lose the second match of this set. Getting into the third match of the set, we got Rhyperior on a Metagross lead, which typically wouldn't be a terrible lead if I was running um, Mud Slap, but I'm running SmackDown. So I save swapping the Dragonite to cue the plan of luring out a potential Flyer, and nothing is swapping in, so that seems to be a good sign. No Togekiss is in the back. Most likely, they're throwing a charge move here, gonna be a Meteor Mash, I need to shield it. And then I build all the way up to the Hurricane here, and what I should have done was I should have just thrown the Hurricane. I guess in this specific situation, Metagrosses don't mind taking this kind of damage because I ran the two opponents in the similar spot and neither of them shielded that move. So it would have been better since Metagross is going to give my Rhyperior a hard time if I through the hurricane to do more damage to it. They then bring in their own Flyer and Dragonite, so that ends up being a positive for me because I'm able to do some Dragon Breath damage to it. I'm gonna throw this Dragon Claw, potentially get a shield or put it extremely low. Put it extremely low, so if they Dragon Breath me down, which is what happens, at least Rhyperior can come in, soak whatever Dragon Claws the Dragonite's gonna throw, and then smack down down. But they didn't end up getting off a move, seemed like lag, because I didn't see anything coming from that Dragonite. But now I'm fully expecting the Metagross to come back in to deal with my Rhyperior. And they happen to have a Surf Fetch of their own. So that happened. And, <laughs> and definitely lining up their Surf Fetch with Rhyperior is a positive there. Because it would be dealing fighting type super effective damage to my Rhyperior. And those Leaf Blades would be double super effective to my Rhyperior being the rock and ground type that it is. So I swap in my Surf Fetch to try and deal with their Surf Fetch. And after they threw a Leaf Blade, I'm throwing mine. I end up getting their Surf Fetch really low. And then I counter down. But unfortunately, that Metagross is going to come back in bullet punch my uh, Surf Fetch down, and they just have too much health here. I'm not gonna be able to get the two Surfs before they get the two Meteor Mashes. So if I would have thrown that Hurricane instead of the Dragon Claw at that Metagross, I might have had more of a chance here to win this match because the Metagross would have been lower on health, and I wouldn't have thrown a second Dragon Claw at their Dragonite, but if anything, that would have been a positive for my Rhyperior because I would have been able to throw more Smackdowns at it when it came back in to deal with it, which would have just given it more energy. So yeah. Big misplay, it was early in the match, not throwing that Hurricane, ended up losing it. 0-3, I promise these next two matches, we're gonna see some strengths. I mean, we kinda saw some strengths. My opponent brought in their Surfetch, and it scared my Rhyperior away, so that off the bat. Surfetch can beat Rhyperior, if you couldn't tell. Getting into this fourth match, we're actually going up against a 6-4 Ninja, fellow Twitch streamer, shout out to him, highly skilled trainer, awesome personality. I'm excited for this match we have up ahead. I lose lead here again, and this one I play just a little bit differently based on how I critiqued the last one. I save swap in my Dragonite, same thing as before. They leave in their Metagross, they're gonna throw a Meteor Mash here. I have every intention of shielding this Meteor Mash. And this time I'm gonna build up to the Hurricane and I'm going to actually throw the Hurricane. So let's do that right here. And 
we'll see if they're going to shield, shield it or not. I kind of spoiled it by saying what I said earlier. They decide not to shield it, and I get the Metagross extremely low, and then they bring in a Dragonite of their own. So it's like I'm literally getting a second chance to replay the last match that we had. The question is, do, does my opponent here have a Surfetch in the back, just like my other opponent did? So I throw a Dragon Claw, I get one of their shields, we're in even shielding situations, and I can bring in my Rhyperior here to tank probably two Dragon Claws at this point, but I will be able to completely farm down the Dragonite. So I'm not feeling too bad about it, and Rhyperior could definitely handle a couple Dragon Claws. I apologize for that noise. It must be the neighbors uh, mowing lawn because, I don't know, if you guys can hear it on camera, you probably can, but I definitely can, and it distracted me. So they throw those two Dragon Claws, like I said. I was able to smack down their Dragonite, and now I'm at a Surf. They come back into their Metagross here, and now when I go to throw the Surf, this threatens the last shield because the Surf would take out the opponent's Metagross. So I get their last shield, safe swap into Surf Edge, hoping to counter down, hoping that whatever they have in the back, my Surf Edge can beat. Their Metagross had some energy. I don't mind using my last shield here because my Surf Fetch is getting a little bit of an energy advantage, and their last Pokemon is an Excadrill, so this could not have lined up any better. So like I said, Surf Fetch, just like the rest of the fighters, going to play really well against any Steel type that you run into. Throw the close combat there, the Metagross comes in, counter it down, Surf Fetch closes out that one for our first win of the set. If you thought Sir Fetch put in work in that last match and you've stuck around this long into the video, first of all, I appreciate y'all. And second of all, Sir Fetch really shines in this last match of the day. So let's get into it. Let's see how it goes. We got a right period on a Dragonite lead here, which appears to be a positive lead considering I'm dealing super effective smackdown damage to the Dragonite and it's only dealing neutral damage to me. Plus the Dragon Claws only really do chip damage. I already had the thing at yellow health. Well, overconfident me believe that I could tank these Dragon Claws no problem and I really got greedy because I throw the Surf here knowing it'll be resisted only to do a little bit of chip damage and to put it in hopefully farm range so Rhyperior will be sitting pretty for the next matchup well Rhyperior's not getting into that next matchup they got to another Dragon Claw at 1 HP and there was no way I was committing a shield to Rhyperior in this situation considering it was almost dead so I completely messed up the whole strat and plan that I have for this team because now my entire back line if it sees a Togekiss this is GG's this game is over I bring in Dragonite finish off their Dragonite thankfully there's no Togekiss in the back. So they bring in Magnezone, I swap in the Surfetch, and their counter to my Surfetch is a Snorlax. And boy, does this not get any more beautiful. So Surfetch with two shields, dealing all this counter damage, racking up all the energy based on the counter's energy generation. And then on top of it, I'm gonna be able to throw these Leaf Blades because I only wanna do chip damage so I can set up Surfetch for the next matchup. It's really going off. The damage is all adding up, threatened the shield on the Snorlax over farms here. Got a little too greedy there, but honestly, I come to learn after when I throw this next Leaf Blade that it's not going to take out the Snorlax, so I don't mind the CMP tie here. And I'm going to go for this Leaf Blade. Like I said, it's going to get the Snorlax low, but that ends up being better because now I can farm down the Snorlax and Surfetch could be even more prepared for the next matchup. Now, I didn't remember exactly where uh, Magnezone's energy was at, so what I did was I went immediately for this close combat and then I'm going to dip. So, what needs to happen from here is I get out, I go into Dragonite, and they only have one potential win con here, and it's not looking very likely because the Magnezone is not liking all of this Dragon Breath damage that my Dragonite's dealing to. It. They throw a Mirror Shot there, but I really think they should have done was built up to like two Wild Charges, throw in a Wild Charge, then a Mirror Shot, or a Mirror Shot, then Wild Charge, whatever the order, and then try to farm me down so that they could then throw a Wild Charge at my Surf Fetch, but I just don't think that the Magnezone was able to generate the energy in time here because I was able to get to both of these Dragon Claws to take out the Magnezone. And this was all because of how beautifully Surfetch went up against their back line. Now, it makes sense because that is what Surfetch's niche is going to be in Mass Elite Premier. It's going to take care of Snorlax. It's going to take care of all the Steel types. And it has Leaf Blade for Swampert. So if you want to use Surfetch, make sure it's fitting on a team of three that needs to counter those specific mons. So, that is Sir Fetch and some Mass League Premier Cup Go Battle League battles. Now, do I think that that was the best team to put around Sir Fetch in Mass League Premier Cup? Not exactly, so please throw your suggestions in the comment section. I definitely want to mess around with the Pokemon more, but I do believe that set really covered its strengths and weaknesses as well. Plus, I was so sick of running into Triple Flyer, so I had to come, out, come up with a strat for that. Now, Surfetch is an extremely exciting Pokemon, and I believe it's a very Swampert type PvP Mon. And what I mean by that is it has play in all three leagues. It's worst play I guess is in Mass League because it ranks in like the top 20 around that area on PV Poke, but that's extremely high considering that's its worst area and it ranks even better in Great League and Ultra League. So when those parts of the season come back around, I will 
be definitely testing out Sir Fetch for some great league and ultra league battles. So I'm really excited for that. I hope you guys are too. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I can't wait to give you more of this content.